Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into today's second video. Do the ECFWF 30 day forecast for the UK and for the rest of Europe as well uh, for today's uh, second video. So this is your uh, regular Tuesday uh, European extended outlook and I shall get on with that for you. In a moment, just say that first, the video is uh, 6 a.m. upload for 10 to 14 day coming up for you today as well. I am going to try and get that uh, ESA update done that I've been promising you uh, for days on end, but I got way away before the other content here on the channel. But if you could, please give us a like on the vid. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Like, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Thanks so much. And thank you so much to ECMDev.int for supplying us with the charts as well. Thank you so much, EC. Right, we're going to start off with the week one mean cell pressure anomaly, taking us from the 3rd to the 10th of April. This week basically sees high pressure dominated, uh, dominating even across Scandinavia and into western parts of Europe as well. We've got low pressure into the south and southeast of Europe. This high pressure of Scandinavia will be bringing easterly winds to many parts of the Europe in the weekend. The 500 millibar height anomaly looks like this with again high pressure centred over Scandinavia but also covering much of northern and western Europe. There's low pressure in the Atlantic and low pressure is to the south and the southeast of Europe as well, for much of the eastern part of the Mediterranean and into southeast parts of Europe too. And the uh, wind flow and direction is coming from that way. Right, so uh, temperature anomalies for this week look like this. Generally milder, milder than average across the far north of Scandinavia, so northern Sweden. And Norway uh, looking a little bit above average, uh, just going into the north as uh, uh, Finland as well. And by an average to northern and western parts of uh, the UK and down into Ireland too. And we also have Spain and Portugal, milder than average. Um, then we have a large area of cold average temperatures starting through southern parts of uh, Scandinavia, that goes Denmark, southern Sweden and Norway. And over the Baltic Sea into uh, Finland and just extending into some of those uh, Baltic Sea states. And then further southwards through uh, parts of England and down into France, cold and average air, low countries, Belgium, Holland, Netherlands, cold and north through there. And then the core of the cold and average temperatures from Germany down to the Balkans where it looks really quite uh, chilly indeed. The central area of the Med also uh, cooler than average. So again, Bally Arrogans to Italy cooler than average there and extending towards Greece as well although Turkey should be uh, a little bit milder than average and northwards up the Black Sea towards the southwest of Russia we run back into above average temperatures through there precipitation wise it looks like this so uh, generally on the wet side through these uh, southeastern parts of Europe again that goes like southern Italy uh, down in towards Greece in particular, possibly back into uh, parts of Turkey as well. Northwards up towards the Black Sea and into southeast Korea, so like the Balkans. Again, looking uh, west average you there, Romania uh, looks as though it could be quite wet. And go northwards up towards the Ukraine as well. Otherwise, a dry sea across much of Europe, especially from Spain, Portugal, in west over to Italy. And northwards of that into France, Germany, the Low Countries, north, northwards still to uh, Scandinavia, dry up the normal through those areas. Back to the UK and Ireland, it's a little bit more variable there. Some places are uh, dry and average, some places average. And eastern coastal areas, picking up that east wind, bringing showers a little bit on the wetter side uh, through there. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, okay, we're going to go on to week two, which will be the 10th to the 17th of April. Not much change, really. High pressure still centering over Scandinavia, maybe retreating back a little bit towards the east of the northeast, but really high pressure is in control across much of the Europe. I'd look a bit through um, this week. We have still got some lower pressure down in that southeastern corner. The 500 millibar height anomaly looks like that. Looks like this, if you'll update, there it is. Uh, <laughs> a bit of a hard in the mouth moment with some high pressure over Scandinavia and much of northwest Europe. Still the legacy of that trough in the far southeast Europe. And a little bit more low pressure coming towards the UK and Ireland, I think, in the Atlantic. Just a little bit more of a westerly flow coming through there. Temperature anomalies look like this. So the kind of temperature is generally getting pushed further eastwards now. So particularly from Italy, again, over the Adriatic into the Balkans, over to Greece and Turkey. 
northwards up towards uh, the Black Sea as well. Generally quite chilly temperatures through there. Meanwhile, it's getting milder in the uh, northwest. For most parts of Scandinavia and the Baltic Sea states are uh, turning milder. And then back into the low countries, northern parts of France or Germany into uh, the UK and Ireland above our temperatures from there and still very mild or even warm, maybe quite hot actually, given the time of year, maybe quite hot through inland parts of Spain and Portugal. We have a uh, balanced area as well in between the uh, milder and cold and average temperatures and that's right through France, which is Germany and into Poland, well, I suppose there there's like a 50-50 chance of either being milder or cooler. And then the precipitation anomaly. Still looks very wet over in the south beach and corner, doesn't it? If you're off to Greece uh, for some uh, early summer sunshine in uh, the first half of April, take your rain, Mac, and brolly with you, because it does look as though there's going to be a lot of heavy showers, maybe thunderstorms through that eastern part of the Mediterranean, just like sitting back to some parts of Italy, then the central western bowl of the Med and Spain, Portugal, looking drier than normal. Much of northern and western Europe, looking generally on the dry side as well, though you notice it is beginning to turn a little bit wetter again through Scotland and Ireland, possibly just hinting that uh, the Atlantic is beginning to start coming back there to the extreme west of the UK and Ireland. OK, week three will be the 17th, 24th of April. Uh, looking rather anti-cyclonic here across uh, much of uh, Western Europe. High pressure is in control. The bit is a slightly weakened signal, so it's not all that well defined. But the 500 millibar heights also back this up quite nicely with an area of above average heights extending through the west and uh, the north of Europe. It's probably going to be a trough through here ongoing, I would think. So it could be shown to be a particularly uh, cool and wet April across the southeastern parts of Europe. The temperature is still looking a little bit colder than average here in the southeast Europe from the Balkans down towards Greece and Turkey. Meanwhile, further north and west uh, above average temperatures through those areas. And then in between, we've got an area of uh, average or no signal. And precipitation-wise, looks like that. So, of course, week three, so it's a weakening signal Generally looking quite dry, though, in Western Europe, so that's Spain, Portugal, France, UK, and Ireland, while Southeastern Europe looks generally still quite wet. Right, week four will take us to the 24th of April to the 1st of May. Quite a big change now. So the high pressure begins to push northwards towards Greenland and Iceland. Low pressure is over northern uh, northwest parts of Europe, so there's low pressure from like through like Denmark, southern Norway, and Sweden, Germany, low countries, uh, and also around Spain, Portugal. Um, so we might be starting to bring in some north northeasterly winds into the north and western Europe with that trough of low pressure there. Uh, let's have a look at 500 millibar height. So, um, oh dear, we're placing a trough of low right over the top of the UK and Ireland as the high pressure goes up towards uh, Greenland and out into the North Atlantic. Temperature on the take a tumble then across northern parts of Europe. It doesn't show anything particularly cold, but that's because we're four weeks out. I suspect it would be turning cooler than average through the north and west of Europe there, with the warmest temperature anomalies uh, retreating to southern Europe and also potentially returning towards more eastern, southeastern parts of Europe. And precipitation-wise, it begins to start getting a bit wetter here uh, through uh, through northern and western parts of Europe. Very weak signal, not mine, but um, it is there. Right, so that's the 30-day uh, forecast done. Let's just have a look at which five and six before we go. So, uh, week five will be the 1st to the 8th of May. And uh, we get some low pressure then out in the Atlantic. High pressure is up towards the north of Scandinavia. Otherwise, very weak signal. The 500 millibar height anomaly, again, showing that area of blocking to the north and the northeast. East, even. Um, the uh, temperature anomaly, uh, generally a little bit mild average across most parts of uh, Europe, and the precipitation anomaly looks a little bit on the west side for northern and western regions, but it's a very weak signal. And then week six will be the 8th to the 15th of May, this is it. Uh, right, so we start to get some higher pressure setting up in the North Sea, close to Denmark. Low pressures out here. That could start to bring some hotter air up the western side of Europe, maybe. Let's put in a question mark, though. Uh, the 500 millibar heights look like that. Oh, ridge coming back to much of northern 
your West Europe. That looks nice, doesn't it, for May? That could bring uh, some uh, really warm weather to western parts of Europe and mainly dry too. Temperature anomalies look like that. Very warm, potentially, for the west of Europe, particularly like France, Spain, Portugal, uh, Germany, below countries into the UK as well. That might be our first spell of quite hot weather, maybe, of the summer. And precipitation-wise, very, very weak signals now, but you know, expect this area to be drier than average. Right, OK, that's it then for your 30-day European outlook. Remember, any forecast beyond five, seven days comes with big health warnings and large pictures of side attacks. So just a snapshot of what the model is showing today look, could look completely different when we look at it again uh, next week. We're going to be back uh, later on with a hopefully an Easter update and also definitely you take to 14 day um no keep checking back for more we'll have another uh let's say European outlook next Tuesday we'll look at this one again on uh Saturday morning with the UK and Ireland uh focus so uh, make sure you check that one out for this week's EC 30 day forecast for the UK and the rest of Europe that's all for now and thanks for watching